Yeah, well, <laughs> right, Dad. Hey, I've got my tickling stick. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, who's late today? Ian. Always in. <laughs> yep. Is that what you do? Just let yourself in here. If the door's left open, it's kind of like an open invite, isn't it, I suppose? So today there was a time schedule. We're already an hour behind. Actually, no, that's a lie. Yeah. We're actually 44 minutes behind. And in comparison to the amount of times you've been late for me... Hey. Hello. How are you? Very, very yeah. tired. Just snoozed the entire oh, yeah. way. Just left Ian to his own devices. Yeah. Nice. What was this? He's got a new £500 jacket that Ray-Ban gave him because they didn't like North Face. This is, this is a very yeah. awkward start. That, this is a very awkward clip. I know. <laughs> Dude, this is how you win the CrossFit Games. I feel like there's a lot of this. Low impact aerobic. A lot of this. Yeah. Nice jacket. Yeah. Man's, man's not hot. These are all classics. Bit of grease. Matilda. Everyone loves this. I say it's now that's a film. That is a film. That's a film. And Disney Pixar X. Shrek. Uh -huh. oh. What do you think? Do you know what I'm thinking? Jeff basically giving you his house. The spare room that was maybe downstairs is now a gym. Yeah. His bedroom is now your hustle room. Yeah. This is pretty awesome. This is going to be interesting, this. I have no idea how this is going to go. <laughs> Team, today we're being interviewed about garage gym equipment. And the perfect home gym setup. It's like an old Nokia flip phone. Then. Hello? I'm terribly unprofessional. Aren't you just? <laughs> Do you want to see you know, and they got it in their ears? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's Jim. <a> good. <laughs> what do you call that? The, the pigeon. That's the pigeon. What what pigeon? Do you know what's like this? Loads of them. Ian's got a courtesy whip. Well, you kind of think like... Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> you know when you take your car and you think you're going to get an equal car back? Yeah. Look what I got. A purple Kia Picanto. Turned up to a big important meeting yesterday. You know, big bosses, big guys. And I pull up in that. They must have looked to me like, who's this jester? Yeah. That's a seatbelt one as well. How's she getting on, Mum? She's all right. She's just big. <laughs> I've got my editing partner. You get the bag, you fumble it, I get the bag, you flip it and tumble it. It's a cow in the car. Good evening. You okay? You had a good day? Well, team, have you? <laughs> Put it down below. <laughs> We just left uh, Northern Ireland and we've now got a subscriber from Northern Ireland here. <laughs> What's your name? Where'd you come from? Ah, uh, Henry Watson. I'm from Lomavati, just about 40 minutes away from Belfast. What's your name? Where'd you come from and who's your role model? Um, <laughs> I'm Stuart Kelly, live in Spain, Irish guy, so I go to a box in Spain, but I also go to CrossFit Swords where my daughter trains. Oh, nice. Hey, daughter. And my role model is Elon Musk. And Jeff. He, and Jeff, of course. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
It was a fun little workout. <laughs> that workout was pretty fun. It was like numbers that you could consecutively hit without breaking, so it was a good workout. It didn't push too hard, but just kept consistent. Anyway, and today I'm gonna do probably one of the tutorials that I've been asked the most to do, and it is the chest to bar butterfly pull up. And it's probably one of the, one of the hardest skills to master uh, in gymnastics, along with kind of the ring muscle ups, because there's so many components to it. <laughs> if you don't have at least five strict pull ups and you don't have the butterfly pull up, the, the, but obviously the butterfly chest pull up isn't for you yet. Okay, first off, we're gonna quickly break down how to do the butterfly pull up, and then we'll go into the chest to bar butterfly pull up. A few coaching tips. You would have seen this on this channel before if you were subscribed like a year or a year and a half ago. I did a video on how to butterfly pull up. But for those of you who didn't, just a quick recap. Get a box. This is the way I teach the butterfly pull up. If you've got the strength to do the pull up and you've got good kipping pull up. This is how I actually learned to butterfly pull up. And the thing is, if you have the strength, it all comes down to rhythm, timing, and learning the movement. And it takes a while to program the movement. The best way for me to program the movement is do it so you can visualize and get that kind of proprioceptive feedback, the feel of how the movement should feel. The way I like to do this is put one foot on the box so you have total control of your body. Get hold of the bar in just a nice, not too wide grip, because it disengages the lats, but not too narrow because you need a bit of room. Just a nice, comfortable grip. And the most important thing to focus on with the butterfly pull-ups is the hips, not the feet. So the drill, you come into a hollow position, up, pull through the bar, back into that hollow position. Just a quick recap. So then again, go into that position, keep that foot nice and straight, drive up the hips. The hips are the most important part. Nice open hips mean you're gonna fall through the bar. Come through the bar, back into that hollow position, and up. So you can feel, actually at the bottom when you fall through, that motion of coming back up that you'll feel. And it also teaches you not to kick early and to maintain a really strong position. Just gonna pick apart the butterfly pull-up quickly too, because obviously if you can make a really efficient butterfly pull-up, then the chest to bars are just gonna come with it. A couple of things I pick up from watching people when they do the butterfly pull-up, especially for the first couple of times, is a couple of these. One is that they rely on their legs too much. You see a lot of people that maybe lack a little bit of strength in the pull or lack a little bit of rhythm is when they kick, instead of using that momentum, what they do is they use a big kick One, it's not efficient. Two, it's not gonna be fast. And three, it's gonna pull you out of position. And especially for that chest to bar. So if you're kicking, you're really gonna to struggle to get your chest to the bar because you're closing down the angle of the hips. Number two is kind of the same. A lot of people are very knees orientated. So instead of staying nice, like we wanna program here, what they'll do, they'll use their knees. Again, it's gonna make the chest to bar a little harder, it's gonna make you inefficient, it's gonna make you slow. So, what I would recommend for people is get something that can keep you in a nice position, i.e. a hat. Ready? Put something between your feet, right, that allows you to keep your feet together. Oh, this is where I lose the hat. <laughs> Think about the hips. Getting those hips high. Those hips high not the feet. Keeping those feet together is just gonna make you more efficient. All right, anything else for that? And obviously probably the most common problem that people, that I see people do when they do the butterfly is they kick too early. But that can be drilled from the first drill. Once you've got all that down, you can nail a good 10 butterfly pull-ups. Then we move on to the chest bar, which I'm gonna show you now a couple of tips, which are gonna make you more efficient and make sure you hit your chest to the bar, because I think they'll come up in the open. Whoa, I need a rest. Chest to bar pull up is, obviously a butterfly chest to bar pull up is just a butterfly pull up, but your chest hits the bar, so you have to pull a little bit higher and there's a couple of things that maybe you can get away with when you're doing the butterfly pull up, that you can't get away with when you're doing the chest to bar pull up, and I'll just kind of go through those now. So obviously a chest to bar pull up, just a quick demonstration, your chest hits the bar, it looks pretty much the same, you're just pulling a little higher. Here. First thing to note, I'm not smacking the bar, I'm brushing it. So you want to brush the bar on your way through, you don't want to smack into the bar. It's gonna, it's gonna save your chest, but also it means that you're doing the movement right if you're brushing the bar and not smacking it. Quick thing, I'm gonna show you, somehow you're gonna have to get on a box too, Jazz, I think. High box for me, that, Jazz. 
sounds like a Yoda box for me that high. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so the chest bar pull up, obviously, one of the biggest mistakes I see with the chest bar is that people still treat it as a pull up. <laughs> yes, we do butterfly pull ups, and technically your chin is coming above the bar, but you're not doing a pull up. Right, so a typical pull up, if you're going to do it kipping wise or butterfly wise, you would come up and you'd pull up, right? Your chest would come and meet the bar. But what does that mean? You can't fall through the bar. Right, so if you're going to butterfly, you're going to hit your chest here you've got nowhere to go. One of the most important things, you'll see it in toaster bar, you'll see it in muscle ups, this angle here between the elbow and the torso. So when you're doing a butterfly pull up, you're closing this, right? That's super important. So when you come into that kip, right? You come up, you close this angle right here, right? You close this angle, you get a strong lat drive down, it opens you up. When you're in this position, you wanna think scapula's retracted, spine extended, that opening of the spine, instead of being here when you're high and trying to get to the bar, it's going to give you more room to be able to hit the bar. What it's also going to do is if you've got your spine retracted and you bring your chest up, what happens to the distance between the bar and your hand? Extended, your chest is up at the sky. The distance between my knuckle and my chest is not very far. If I let my spine come back and not fully extend and I let go of my scapulars, I've got way further to travel. Okay. So you've slammed, you've slammed that gate closed like you do in a toaster bar. How am I supposed to get this? How tall do you think I am? I don't know, Jazz, but... Okay, so you've slammed... You ready? Yep. So you've slammed closed this like you're doing a toaster bar. You've got everything extended and uh, engaged. Now with this, hands a little bit wider. It's just going to make the distance between the bar and your chest obviously a little bit shorter again. And then starts the pull-up. Now instead of your elbows coming out, which is a big fault, because then you're gonna pull yourself in. You wanna pull your elbows back. What that's gonna do is pull you into the bar. When you're fully extended, pick somewhere up on the ceiling with your face and fall through. What happens to my chest when I put my head down? So say I'm here, extended. If I put my head down, my chest comes down with it. So when doing butterfly pull-ups, don't look forwards, especially because you're gonna come in and you'll probably whack your nose. It's gonna make you less beautiful. <laughs> this is a great drill feet on the box again. You can really just think about the movement. You can do it under control, and then you can take it away from the bar and make it quick. Big kip, boom. Close the angle, boom. Chest stays up, scapula retracted, head up, pull into the bar with the elbows back. Scrape the bar as you fall through, and you go back into that kip, right? So the most important part is when you've closed this, you're away from the bar, you get your height away from the bar, and as you fall back down, you can fall through the bar, scraping the chest. That's the chest of bar pull-up in a nutshell. Like, it may take a lot of reps like this. Look, I've had to put two plates on a box to even be able to get the height, so I can support myself with the leg. But they're kind of the main things that you want to focus on when doing the chest of bar. Don't move on to the chest of bar if you don't have the strength to do five pull-ups, just for the sheer forces in your shoulders and obviously master the butterfly pull-up first and make sure your shoulders can manage that before you go to the chest bar because you are pulling a little bit harder and you are being in like the forces that you're gonna create are a little bit more on your shoulders. So just pick up on the coaching points here. See how my spine's extended, see how my scapulas are attracted, see how when I pull up to the bar my elbows aren't out, they're in, see how I look up and see how I'm driving the hips up and making sure that my butterfly's coming from the hips and not from the feet and the knees. Because that's just going to put you in a bad position. Scrape the bar, get your height before the bar, fall through, scrape it on the way down. Ta-da! I hope that helped. <laughs> it's a question that I get asked a lot and I've just been meaning to do an exercise tutorial. If you have anything else that you want to cover, let me know. And if you did enjoy that and you did help, obviously you smash that like button. Share it with family, friends, whoever needs to learn to chest bar. Butterfly. I prefer to teach you like this. Do you start on the floor? And then you... <laughs> God damn it, Kieran and those kipping push-ups can never get them away from him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope that was that. Like, obviously, today's not been much of a vlog, but I hope you learnt off that.
chest to bar come up in the open usually <laughs> rather than pull-ups just because they're so much easier to judge like if your chest hits the bar your chest hits the bar so if they come up in this year's open don't neglect them if you don't have them now and you do have butterflies but you don't have butterfly chest to bar just get working on them use those tips get in there every day break it down with your foot on a box get comfortable with the movement and how it should feel take it away from the box and gradually don't just try and smash out 50 gradually build up the volume over time da, 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 da. and it's a race and it's a race we're like those things that you, you can't bench your knees you wind up and they're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, well, normally has a drum doesn't it like cymbals yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh the fun we have yeah, share it with anyone that can help. Smash that like button if you did enjoy the info. And if you already have the butterfly chest to pull up, I hope there's a couple of tips in there that you can help someone else with. So they can go and smash it too. Two years ago? Uh, I got a little Facebook memory and it said, um, I'd obviously put uh, a post out about the, your first road to the regionals. And it said, oh, and the, it's gone massive. This video has hit 10,000 views. Which 10,000 views is still a lot of views. Like, if I got 10,000 views, I'd be happy. But it just shows how it's changed. And now the fav we are favourite one's going to hit, what, 50 soon? Yeah. Cool. And what happened today with the ring? Oh, yeah. A couple got married and they tagged us in their photo. And they even got We Don't Quit. By engraved in their wedding rings. How how cool is that? That's like the coolest thing ever. That's insane. And what's going to happen with We Don't Quit, Kieran? Um, I think we're going to get it on the wall. So yeah. That's what everyone suggested it. So then when anyone comes and comes and hangs out with us, we can get a photo in front of the We Don't Quit wall. Yeah. It's going to be a famous We Don't Quit wall. I'm picking this one. That one right there. You want that one? Yeah. Okay. Well, Miria would favour that side then. Yeah. I think it should say we are Faber and then it should be we don't quit. Yeah, I've thought about we are Faber because like Tiger Muay Thai, they have we are Tiger, but I don't know, I don't know. Faber is a person that works with iron, if yeah. you didn't know. Yeah, so that's why we are Faber doesn't really work because it should We be. are people that work with iron. Oh yeah, I suppose, but I think it'd be I am Faber, no? Or I am a Faber? <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Do, do me a favour. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Faber Tooth Tigers. Faber Tooth Tigers. Oh, well, where is favourite? <laughs> Two favourites. Obviously. Yeah. Two favourites. Yeah. <laughs> Just two favourites <laughs> hanging around in the box. This is what happens, like, because you'll come up with really good ones, and then I'm like, I'll be sitting there for two hours' time, and I'll like, sit out on my bed, and I'll be like, I've got one! <laughs> this is like two hours later after the conversation. Hey, Jazz. Probably text you. Yeah. Pirate. No. What you do this for pirate? This is a thing. There's oh, it definitely is a thing. It's not a thing. This definitely is this a is thing. It's not a thing. Well, I love it. It's probably my favorite. Yes, that's Kieran. That's the pirate. 